Shocker, shocker, we're here after a NASCAR weekend and Ross Chastain is the center of attention. I feel like the mundane part of NASCAR has been the exciting part now, or vice versa. The fact that over and over again, we have the same guy in similar issues and we have the same talking points. But I think this week was a major step for many aspects of Ross Chastain's career in the Cup Series. And I also think it's a major step when it comes to how this will all progress probably be resolved long term. If you didn't see on Sunday, Ross Chastain was involved in an incident with Kyle Larson. On one of the restarts, Larson tried to pinch Chastain up into the wall. Definitely an aggressive move, but something that has been seen before at Darlington. Though, them making contact and Larson making sure that he was in the wall was something very uncharacteristic in my opinion for the five to do intentionally. It was very odd to see, and Ross Chastain did not like that. And this would happen on the ensuing restart. Now, there were some interesting comments from both Chastain and Rick Hendrick while Kyle Larson would walk off. Here's what Chastain and Mr. H had to say about the whole deal. Full commit uh, into one, and I got really tight uh, and drove up and, and turned myself. I. I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to. I wanted to push him up. Uh, we had been trading back and forth all day, and and uh, I wanted to, to push him up for sure, but definitely didn't want to turn myself in the wall. Chastain pressure. crossed the line. I think you can ask any driver in here that he's wrecked. I've been involved with him. He, you know, he doesn't have to be that aggressive. And I guess at this at this point in the race, maybe you're you're super aggressive, but you just don't run people up in the fence or, you know, just he's not going to he's going to make a lot of enemies that it's hard to win a championship when you got a lot of paybacks out there and uh so i he's got so much talent i think if he just calmed down that uh there's a time to race dale Earnhardt uh told me dale Earnhardt senior told me one time he said you know i won't name the driver who drove for me but he said uh you know he's got all the talent he just doesn't know how to race and uh and meaning he just knows when to race, when to push it. Uh, he's got a lot of talent, but he's making a lot of enemies out here. And I mean, Kyle, now this is this this one in Dover, and you know it, this uh, it's it's getting Talladega. It's really getting old with these guys. And obviously, these guys are competitors, but this is another Chevrolet driver. So um, I don't care if he's driving a Chevrolet if he wrecks our cars. I don't care, and I've told Chevrolet that. If you wreck us, you're going to get it back. And if you don't do it, they'll run all over you. So, you know, I'm, I'm loyal to Chevrolet, but when somebody runs over us, then I expect my guys to hold their ground. And not, I'm not going to let them ask them to yield just because of the Chevrolet. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is something that honestly shocked me. Rick Hendrick is not usually somebody who comes out in public and talks badly about another driver or in the kind of way he did right here, almost issues a threat. And it's something that has rarely happened in the history of his race team in the Cup Series. The only time I can ever think of something like this happening was when Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt had issues with each other in the 80s. And Rick Hendrick being this upset should be a wake-up call to many and send shockwaves to the garage. And I think it's a very important and pivotal crossroads for Chastain and Trackhouse as both a young driver being elite for the first time in his career in the last two years and a new team with Trackhouse really fighting against the establishment of Chevrolet as well as others. We heard Cliff Daniels mention Chevrolet and they surely will probably have to debrief on this whole deal but it makes me wonder, especially with how Hendrick said that his drivers will not be taking that and he will not be taking that. He does not want to be walked over. Will there be payback? I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of it with Chastain as in the last year and a half, Chastain has been in incidents with at least a third of the field. And I'm not exaggerating with that. There's plenty of top tier, mid tier and lower tier teams that he has wronged. There are plenty of drivers that come playoff time or championship time may have nothing to lose and would get one back on him. NASCAR, especially if he made the championship four, may have to protect Chastain. And while this is very similar to other rookie hot shots or young drivers through the years that were really fast but could not harness it, it's very similar to that 
It also is something that is a little bit unprecedented because a lot of those guys were just really racing hard and sometimes went a little too far or were too aggressive. In this case, Chastain over and over again does seem to make mistakes, but this time it was intentional as well. So I don't know just what to think about it other than Chastain has a reputation it's easy to see. While Larson did have a little bit of blame starting some stuff up with Chastain after they raced hard, you can't deny that Ross Chastain made a stupid move and lost foresight of the bigger picture. The bigger picture being a win, instead from the telemetry of him being full speed and full throttle and the fact that he pretty much said he was trying to pay him back, that payback will cost him yet again another win and will cost Team Chevy a win with at least a five car. Now, will Hendrick drivers pay him back? I personally think so. At some point, you're seeing drivers who have been pushed and pushed and pushed. And the last time I can remember drivers over and over again being pushed by the same driver was in 2015 with Joey Logano. And nobody before Martinsville probably would have guessed that Matt Kenseth did to Logano what he did, but that ended up being what happened. Now, I don't think out of at least my knowledge of watching these guys that any of the Hendrick guys would intentionally wreck somebody. I don't think Truex would, who seemed very mad as well at Ross Chastain. But you push a driver over and over and over again, like a Kyle Larson being involved in some kind of wreck or incident with Chastain for three weeks in a row, Martin Truex Jr., a driver who knows his time is running out and has to get more wins because, well, his career could be over in the next two years, these guys could snap from both desperation and frustration to take Chastain on. And at that point, when drivers who usually don't race like that race like that, Usually, it seems like the former aggressor would be the one who would end up being taken out and hurt the worst. Now, will this Hendrick rivalry continue? Will there be more incidents between Hendrick Motorsports and Ross Chastain? Up front, I'm going to say it now. Yes. All four Hendrick cars are very good cars. Whether it's Josh Berry or Alex Bowman driving the 48 it's gonna be a fast car. The 24 of Byron is the winningest car in NASCAR this year. While he has five DNFs, Kyle Larson has been running up front all season and led the most laps all year, and Chase Elliott at the moment might be the most consistent driver in the Cup Series. They will be up front. Ross Chastain is bad fast. He's also gonna be up front, and I think that it's gonna continue well into the summer, and if it does not simmer down soon, if Chevy probably doesn't get involved, then there will be some big issues come playoff time, and you may see Hendrick just full-on take Chastain out of the championship hunt. We have no idea how good Alex Bowman is going to be, and if he gets wronged, what would he have to lose if he's out of the playoffs? What if there's a guy at Hendrick who gets eliminated from the playoffs, and it's partially or in some way due to Ross Chastain? If they have nothing to lose, why not ruin Chastain season two? That could very well happen. And I think the crossroads here between Trackhouse and what they do with the future is they either got to embrace the black hat, be the villain, know that that's their role, or they need to step back a bit and basically be the second tier team at Chevy to Hendrick Motorsports. There is a clash coming in many ways with this. Hendrick Motorsports rarely gets challenged fully by a Chevy team. And now with Trackhouse and Chastain doing that on top of the aggression, I think this is only going to ramp up even more. Chevrolet and Trackhouse also have to be careful how they handle it because if you get Chastain too much in his head, who thinks he's not just going to make more mistakes trying not to do stuff he did before? Now, I'll say this about Chastain. I do applaud that at least he didn't apologize like he always does. At least he owned he wasn't trying to wreck himself and didn't apologize to the five team at all. While I personally wouldn't do that, it makes it more entertaining. And personally, I'm in for a lot of that as well. Will anything change? We're going to have to wait and see. But with a short track at North Wilkesboro coming up and a non-points race, I'm hard-pressed to believe that they're not going to do something or at least rattle his cage a little bit. As for the long term... Chastain better watch his back. There are some very fast drivers who feel like they owe him one. Guys like Larson, Kyle Busch, maybe Martin Truex Jr. And it seems like the 1 and 11 are always drawn together, so they could possibly rekindle their rivalry that at the moment has been 
mended a little bit. Either way, I don't think things are going to change anytime soon, and I would be completely surprised if Chevrolet and Trackhouse tell Chastain to step down. He's been aggressive. It's gotten him to the point he's at now, and I think over time, the garage just might have to handle it themselves, just trying not to get punched in the face like Noah Gregson did. But with that, I want to pass this all on to you, and I want to ask what you thought of Ross Chastain's deal and what Hendrick said about Chastain. Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and thank you so much to everyone who was at Darlington this past weekend and everyone who supported us with the podcast party bus on BJ McLeod's number 78. It was a dream come true, and I am so happy I got to share it with you. Now, until next time, have a good one.